Hey everyone, it's May and welcome to another episode of The May Lee Show. Uh, I know I've uh, been sporadic about releasing episodes and uh, I sound like a broken record, uh, but I have been feeling a little overwhelmed for the past several weeks for a variety of reasons. So I'm trying to like, I feel like I'm like treading and keeping my head barely above water with all the things that I'm trying to take care of. And you know, some sort of emotional things too, psychological things where I think we're all sort of still feeling the ramifications of the last two years with COVID and anti-Asian hate and the stresses of getting back to quote unquote normal and the pressures of that. Uh, I got to admit to you, commuting again, and I only do this twice a week. I have to commute to USC where I teach only twice a week. And I got to tell you, it is a nightmare having to commute again and being in traffic. Uh, so it is a, a rude awakening for sure. And by the way, right now, as I'm shooting this, um, open to this episode, it is pouring down rain. And I live in Southern California. It never rains. This is a miracle. And it's so weird to see rain and hear it coming down. Ooh, and there's lightning and thunder right now. Bizarre. Thank you, God, because I have been praying for rain. We are suffering from just the most horrific drought, of course, uh, because of climate change and fires burning out of... Oh, did you hear that? That was thunder. So we desperately need rain. So this is a blessing for sure to hear rain and see rain coming down. Um, so hopefully it'll keep raining. We need so much more rain, actually, because we are in a terrible, terrible drought. Um, okay, well, that's not what this episode is about. Um, this episode, I was able to interview somebody that I stumbled upon, actually. Her name is Leela Lee, and she's the creator of Angry Little Asian Girl. It's a cartoon that she started many, many years ago when she was still in college, um, not with the notion or idea that it was going to become some big success. She actually wanted to create something for herself because she felt like a very angry Asian young woman at the time for a variety of reasons. But now, uh, years later, uh, it has become a success to the point where it is now going to be made into a TV series and some holiday movies. That announcement came just like two months ago. Uh, so I saw this announcement in a publication and I'm like, what is this? Look up the show and realize, oh my God, this is a hilarious cartoon. It's very sort of South Park-esque because it is raw and crude to a certain extent, but very truthful and authentic using cute characters to speak truth and to poke fun and criticize some real life issues in society. An angry little Asian girl, as you can imagine, it's sort of the combination of the idea of being a female, being Asian in living in America and everything that comes with that, both the good and the bad. Wow, you guys, it is pouring outside. I'm, I'm so distracted right now by the rain. I know some of you who are like living in rainy places, you're like, what is her problem? It's just rain. It's, it's, it's weird. It's weird to me. Okay. Anyway, get, getting back to Leela Lee and angry little Asian girl. So this is a cartoon that really started off as something that she just wanted to do to express her own frustration and anger. And now it is about to explode. Um, and you can see some of the episodes online, um, on YouTube and things like that. But so I decided, you know what, I'm going to contact this woman because I think she probably has a lot to say. And I really want to know more about how this all got started and the statements that she's trying to make and, you know, through the cartoon, trying to educate and inform and, you know, kind of almost do a little bit of activism as well. So I love the whole idea. So I contacted her contacted her and she very graciously was willing to come on the show. So here is that interview with Leela Lee. Leela, welcome to the show. It's so good to meet you. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we have to first start off saying you are my soul sister, meaning C S E O U L because we're both Korean American. So mm -hmm. gotta, gotta do the shout out, but Leela, I, you know, 
I have done the research on you and read about you and watched the episodes of Little Angry, uh, Little Angry Asian Girl. And it speaks to me so much on so many levels because you address the idea of being Asian and, you know, being made to feel like the outsider, the, the idea of being angry as a girl. And I think a lot of girls and women feel this way constantly, but I need to know what was going in, on in your mind when you first came up with this character, because this was in college, right? Yeah. So I was taking an Asian American studies class with the famous Ronald Takaki. Um, and he talked about, how there was a lack of representation. Um, all the things that everybody's talking about right now. Yeah. So it took it took so long for it to become the mainstream conversation on everybody's minds and lips. Okay, wait um, a minute, Leela. Can I interrupt for one second? I took that class too. Oh, you did? I took Ron's class. Now I'm a little bit older than you, so let me calculate. I think I took his class in 1987, maybe? Okay, so I took it in uh, 92, 93. Okay, how funny. Yes, I love that class. Yeah, it was a really eye-opening class. I learned so much about all the things I couldn't describe or articulate. Like when I was in that class, so my freshman year I took uh, women's studies, sociology, any class that was remotely interesting I, I took. So I took... Um, Asian American studies and uh, all of those things really formed. Um, it really was sort of the fodder. It was all the material that I needed because I had gone. Um, I'd lived in this suburban city that was very, um, you know, it was a Western themed town. Everybody wore cowboy boots. You know, it was like a really pleasant um, suburban neighborhood and community. And, um, I felt very isolated from everybody because we were, I think one of three Asian families. The other, uh, Asian family was a Japanese boy and his parents. Um, the father was a strawberry farmer. Mm. And then, uh, the other girl was my first friend in kindergarten. She was a Chinese girl, but she was like a parachute kid. Okay. So, uh, so we all just knew we were different, but we didn't, we just tried to assimilate and blend in. Yeah. We did not bond of or course. like think that we were any sort of like Asian crew at all. <laughs> it was like, it was like, you look different, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> and I'm just trying to be white. Yeah. 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 Just blend in. Just not, blend in. <laughs> yeah. Not get picked on, um, and just get through. So, so I had lived, you know, gone through all high school in a very conservative setting where we didn't talk about race, but it was kind of the elephant in the room. Yes. Everybody knew we were different. Um, and then also you, I was like living a double life. Like it was like my Americanized school life. And then like this really strict, obedient Asian Korean yeah. set of rules. It sounds exactly so, like my upbringing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it was sort of like, I had to, switch a lot. And, um, so when I, when I went to college and I took all these classes and it was in that Asian American studies class where professor Takaki was talking about the lack of representation. And I started doodling, um, this little Asian girl. And I was uh -huh. like, it'd be so cool if there was like a doll that was Asian. And, you know, I put it away and I went through my, uh, the rest of the year sort of just really being very like upset. Um, I was upset because I was a young person, a young adult inheriting, uh, inheriting a set of beliefs and systems that I, that was really unfair to me. Mm. And for example, like when I saw billboards, you know, and this was, this was eye opening from just my women's studies class, you know, the objectification of women's bodies used in ads to sell, I don't know, pimple cream or something. Right. And so that class sort of like opened my eyes to how, um, women are really used in, and expected to, um, comply with 
the objectification and serving the the dominant class and mm. gender. Yeah. And so when I um when I was learning all these things, I was just really like confused. <laughs> I was like um, um, no, my parents told me to be polite and to like get good grades. And, right. And not make know, waves, just, don't speak up and don't protest or anything like that. Right. None of that. Yeah. But, but meanwhile, I'm at UC Berkeley and it's like the most progressive school about right. all about protesting and all that. And, uh, and a big Asian student population too. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I, I was just really, I couldn't articulate what I was angry about. And I was really like, I think I was depressed. I, I don't know. It was like a bad sort of like melancholy about me as a, a young woman. I was inheriting this world that was going to be unfair to me. Mm. And so my friend who uh, was a very jolly guy was like, you need to laugh. Let's go see this animation <laughs> festival in the city. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so uh, we go to the Spike and Mike Sick and Twisted Festival of Animation. I'm expecting to laugh, but every cartoon, like ev like everything that was programmed was basically about date rape. Um, what? There was like a, a, a fat girl and a skinny girl that were like going out on the town. And then the skinny girl was getting all the guys. And so the fat girl was just like, super easy and then she ended up like it was just horrible so oh everything God. that i watched was like just more more humor at the expense of females oh, that's wow. what that was okay so i, I the screening finished and i was just fuming <laughs> and my friend is like dude why are you so angry and i couldn't articulate like what was making me mad and he's like you need to make a cartoon about yourself so um, he dropped me off. I went back into my apartment and I couldn't sleep because I was so mad. I mean, like this whole, the whole year had gone by where I was learning about all this stuff. Right. And I still didn't know what I was going to do with my life or what major I would pick. Um, I had taken this video class on Tuesday nights for no credit. And um, I was like, you know what? I will make a cartoon about myself. Um, so I stayed up that night drawing. I made the angry little Asian girl the first day of school. Wait, and, and mind, then, you, mind you, you had no like cartoon experience or draw, like really illustration background at all, right? No, um, I was showing signs of artistic ability in grade school huh. um, <laughs> okay. when my... Um, when my dad went to like an open house for school, the teacher noted, oh, you know, we have all of Leela's um, art assignments on the wall. She's very good at art. Um, and I, I wanted to take an art class in, I think, high school or um, I did take art in junior high. But, but I knew that my mom and I did want to go to college for art, but my mom was like, no, that's not going to happen. So um, <laughs> So I had really like stunted development. It was really like uh, grade school level art, okay. and um, and I think um, I'm not to not sad about it at all because I ended up making it work for me because <laughs> my comic strips are very grade school, and it works with the humor. So um, so yeah, I had I didn't have any artistic sort of background, but I I just did it and. Um, I had access to the equipment from the classroom because nobody did any work in that class because they didn't get a grade. So yeah. it was always yeah. <laughs> free. So I, um, I booked it for like a whole Saturday and I just sort of fumbled through with my little drawings. Um, and then I was shooting it. And then as I was shooting it, I realized that, um, I, I didn't know how to edit. So I had to fill the the silence and I started humming. So it's kind of funny because, um, I feel like mistakes are also happy accidents. Mm. So the mistake ended up giving me like, Oh, I got to fill the space. And so I started humming and right. then that became sort of like a little, um, like when the video came out much later and I used the humming again, people would start humming that tune to me <laughs> be like, like okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that original, your original version um, is on YouTube. I mean, is that the one that I is available, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's like just a few minutes long. Yeah, and it was it was so after I made it, I put it together, I watched it, and I was like, I have to hide this. This is so angry. <laughs> No one's going to want to be my friend. Oh my so I God. stuck it in a drawer. Yeah. Indefinitely. Right. And I just. For years. Yeah. For years for you years. stuck it in the drawer. Hello. My name is Sue Lee and I'm new in the neighborhood. <laughs> the teacher was quite shocked. Why? You speak English so well. Where did you learn to speak so well? She asked. The little Asian girl was quite offended and mad. I was born here, you stupid dipshit. Don't you know anything about immigration? Read some real history books, you stupid ignoramus. She yelled. The class was dumbfounded. The teacher was quite shocked. Oh my, what an angry oriental girl. I'm an angry Asian girl, you stupid head. And with that, the little Asian girl went home. How did I you I never thought I would look at it. I know, but let me ask you this. When you put it in the drawer, were, were you thinking, yeah, this that, that was just a blip and I'm I'm done with that? Or did you ever did, was there something in the back of your mind thinking maybe at some point this will come up again? Maybe I'll revive it. No, not not at all. No. Wow. I had just made it as an extra like just to vent and then I was I mean like I was sort of like I knew I was, I wanted to be a storyteller in some way. Yeah. So I was taking drama. Um, I took the video class, you know, I was also writing just really bad stuff, but just writing anyway. So <laughs> all the stuff that came out of me was really organic. It was just like, Oh, I'll try it. And I was just like, I did it. And then yeah. I put it away. So, but the video of angry little Asian girl, like it was so angry. It was, but was it's, like, it's freaking hilarious. I'm, and it's very realistic. You know, what you touch on in that initial video is so accurate in terms of real life and real life experience for Asian kids. Yeah, but we weren't saying that because remember, we were just all like, we ain't talking about us being Asian. We're I just know. trying to fit in. So this was your internal dialogue, clearly, that we all had growing up. We all mm -hmm. wanted to say, you know, fuck you, you stupid person. You know, I, it's because I was born here when, you know, the teacher's like, your English is, you speak English so well. We yeah. all wanted to say, you fucking idiot. It's because I was born here. Yeah. But we, of course, couldn't. No. Yeah. No. And so, yeah, I really did. I, I put it away and I thought it was like done. done. Like I had no thought of it. And then it was revived like years later. Well, what happened was um, after I graduated college, um, I was, you know, pounding the pavement, trying to get my acting going because I um, I was really drawn to acting yeah. and um, I was having some sort of like early success. So I um, I knew that I could I could do it if I put effort into it. Um, but my mom and dad needed help with their dry cleaners. Um, so I went and I worked there like every day. <laughs> um, and then, uh, the morning and evening rush is the only time that it's really busy. So the, the middle of the day is super boring. So I just started dr drawing and doodling again. Um, and I think it was around that time it was in, in, 98. So I, I made Angry Little Asian Girl in 94. Mm -hmm. That's when she first was drawn and yeah. came into being. And then it stayed in a drawer. And I think it was like maybe, no, it was 97. Um, the Spirit of Christmas, the South Park Spirit of Christmas was going around. Okay. And my friend had gotten a, a, a hold of one of the tapes and he showed it to, to me and our friends. We were all together in the living room. Um, and I watched it. I'm like, that's like Angry Little Asian Girl. <laughs> um, so I actually took out the VHS tape 
that's when it came out of the drawer. Uh. And I was like, hey, I have something that's sort of like that. And I showed it to them. They're like, oh, that's really funny. You should do something with it. Yeah. So it was it was that sort of encouragement. And then because I had time at my parents' shop in the middle of the day that I was like, well, maybe I will come up with more episodes. So at the dry cleaners, I came up with four more episodes. Um, I came up with Saturday at the park, Pat, uh, lunch with Sally. And, um, I forget the the fifth one. Um, but anyways, I came up with those four and then I was, um, volunteering as a photographer at the American Cinematheque because I wanted to see movies for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that was That's a, really a good, good ploy. way for me to yeah. find, yeah, to get into a, a mission. And yeah. so um, I'd been doing that for a while. And then the programmer was like, what is your story? Why are you always coming to these screenings? <laughs> um, what do you do besides take pictures? And then um, I told her that I was an actress and also I had this little cartoon. She's like, oh, send me your cartoon. I want to look oh. at it. So I had sent it and then she called me like a week later. She's like, I want to program this. I'm going to program this for next month. It's going to be in front of a feature. Um, and then because she had access to the critics of the LA Times, LA, LA Weekly, she sent it over to them to give a review of like the, the night screening for the shorts and for the feature. And then um, my... My friend called me and was like, oh, my God, you got reviewed and it's really good. Oh, wow. And so I um, I had to go out to a newspaper stand. You know, remember the ones that were the metal? Yeah, the quarter exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Back <laughs> so in the good myself. old days. Yeah. Back in the good old days. So <laughs> I put a quarter in. I took like a whole stack. <laughs> <laughs> and I read it and I was really stunned because, like, there's no movement. It doesn't really move. It's just like pictures. Yeah. And then. I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. And then I, I went to the screening that night and I was really nervous. And then after the feature played, I stood outside with the other director and, um, all these people came up to me and they were like, Oh my God, <laughs> I'm the angry little Asian girl. That's everything I wanted to say. And it was just like repeatedly, these people were saying like, the same thing. And I was like, I'm going to make t-shirts. So <laughs> that's the first so thing you thought of and, a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. So I went yeah. and uh, I found a sporting goods store uh -huh. and you know, like they make team. Yeah. Yeah. Team yeah. shirts Jerseys for athletic stuff. teams. Yeah. That, Cause that's all that was available back then. Okay. And, um, so I was like, I, he, here's my artwork. I want to make, um, some t-shirts so he was like, okay, well, you need to make 300 because even if you just make like 12, it'll be the same cost. Okay. And I was like, what? So I put on a credit card um, and then like three weeks later, he's like, okay, your shirts are ready. And I was like, oh my God, I have 300 of these shirts. <laughs> and I started to panic and then I called all of my friends and I was like, I just did something really crazy. I made these shirts and I have like 300 of them and I put it on a credit card. I don't have any money. Like, will you please buy one? <laughs> so they bought it and then um, they started wearing it outside and then random people I didn't know started calling me saying that they wanted to buy these shirts from me. So oh that was cool. Yeah. All these people were coming into my apartment, but I was like, this is not the safest because you know, I'm a yeah. woman and I don't want strangers coming over my place. So I, um, I was telling my cousin about my, my shirt selling and he's like, Oh, I'll make a website for you. So then in 98, um, he, he helped me make the website. And then, um, I figured out how to do like credit card processing online and stuff, but it was all dial up and I still had to like walk the shirts over the post office oh and mail them God. off. But, um, yeah, those were my those, those were, my were the beginning days. Yeah, so it was kind of like all sort of by accident that you sort of yeah. fell into this. But obviously you hit a nerve. You 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 spoke through this character and obviously it was part of you and mm -hmm. you know what you were thinking and feeling. But for some reason, I mean it resonated clearly. 
with so many people across the board, not just Asians. It was like people from all different backgrounds feeling this way, mm -hmm. right? So when you saw that this was something that you know was worth pursuing, were you like, okay, this is it. This is what I'm meant to do. Um, I think it was a gradual thing because, mm. um, so when I was, when I had the website and I was selling those shirts and, um, I had the reviews in the LA times and the LA weekly, um, Hollywood heard and they came calling and I had some meetings and then, um, one of them asked me, they, they wanted to give me a deal. And then they asked me if I would consider taking the Asian girl out. And I was like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? What would be the point? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you don't say no to authority figures when you're an Asian daughter yeah. raised to please and say, thinking yes. That, would, thinking that they know how, better. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, I was like really, I was really torn about what to do. And then they, they proceeded to set me up with, um, coffee dates with showrunners to see who I had the best sort of like working relationship with. Okay. And I remember going to these coffee dates and I'm like, they asked me to take the Asian girl. out. Oh, I, I don't know what to do. And then one of them happened to be Jill Soloway. She later created transparent, but in her early oh, career, wow. she okay. had an overall deal. And then she was like, say no, just like flippantly, like just pass. And I was like, I can say no. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> so I, I, I don't know why that hit me. So, um, it impacted me a lot that she was a woman that was like, whatever what? say no and yeah. I was like okay so I ended up passing and okay. um then I decided that I had to kind of go around the studio system um so I wanted to make uh I, and then around that time I was I was selling shirts out of the trunk of my car mm -hmm. and I was meeting a lot of women and the women of all backgrounds were like I'm so angry too yeah but I can't wear this shirt because I'm not Asian. So what that said to me was that like uh, women are harboring a lot of rage yes. about being told to be pleasant. So it's the same. Interesting. It's just different culture. Right. right. So um, I expanded it to angry little girls. I, I made the angry little Asian girl the main character, but I sort of like made it more diverse. So yeah. that like, yeah, more inclusive um, in terms of like, girls and women's voices, right? From different backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. And yeah. so then, um, I just decided that I would make continue drawing a weekly comic strip. And then I made a goal to make a book and that I would make it so that the audience and the public knew these characters yeah. so that the studio couldn't, could never ask me to Change take something. any of them out. Well, which is what they do really well, you know, even to this day. But so you basically, I mean, this is bootstrapping uh, on your part, right? This is all you. It's not like, like you said, you didn't go through a studio. You didn't have like some huge investor coming in and helping you. It, it was bootstrapping. You even did a Kickstarter for a little while, didn't you? To try to raise yeah, I funds. did it. I did it for the 25th anniversary of the Angry Little Asian Girl. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was super cool to be able to crowdsource that and then um, make the product for them because I had gone to investors yeah. and then there was a lot of booby traps. <laughs> so yes, like, yes, mm. yes, exactly. And they and they will use them. I mean, here's the thing. You now have this website. I'm, I'm kind of scrolling through it right now. Of course, you know, there's just the basic angry little Asian girl. Um, I, oh my God, I hate people. You know, I mean, these are all... Oh, wow. You speak English so well. I was born here. Dumbass. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's out there. It's, it's pretty raw, but people love it because it's so mm -hmm. honest, right? It's I so think authentic. It's honest and it's also cute. And it I was. think this, she's the, adorable. The, yeah. The yeah. combination of the aesthetic with what it's saying, I think works for, um, because I couldn't say this stuff in real life. Like if I was just like me, like out there just spewing this stuff out, they'd be like, stay away from her. But because it's like removed and it's this harmless little drawing that's like cute. Yeah. 
it just works. I it's, think, you and know, so. it's true, Lila, because I was thinking about that is it's, it's like humor when humor is used to talk about serious matters, right? That's why comedy mm -hmm. works. And certainly with cartoons, yeah, of course it's going to be effective because like you're saying, yeah, it's cute. It's in this cute little package, but the messaging is so powerful. Even, you know, in your episodes of, of Angry Little Asian Girl, you touch on some pretty heavy shit sometimes, you know, about mm -hmm. like race relations and like obviously gender conflict and then like generational issues and intersectionality. I mean, so many topics that are dead serious and yet you're able to address it through a cartoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, what I like about what you do also with, with the anger issue is that it's not, all anger is not bad. You know, mm -mm. anger is good. You know, it, it can be very useful uh, and it can be very empowering. And let's, let's be real, Leela. I mean, the last year and a half, almost two years now, we've been going through some angry shit you know, mm -hmm. within the AAPI community because of the xenophobia mm -hmm. and the anti-Asian hate. So there's been a lot of reason to be angry. Um, and that has empowered us to start really speaking out and, you know, starting to embrace identity and history and heritage, ethnicity, all of these things that may have not been talked about or may have been dismissed. We have been invisibilized. All of these things that your cartoon actually expresses, it's almost like you were prophetic. You, <laughs> I mean, seriously, think about it. It's just like some of the issues that you address long before this stuff happened. Is it, You could show these cartoons over again right now and they'd be completely accurate and they would be hitting the nail on the head. Yeah, I... I think that there are a lot of us that are waking up to what we lived, kind yeah. of like how I explained going through college, like, oh, that's what that was. Like, yeah, we went, we went through it, but we, we haven't been able to name it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but I, I really do need to ask you, you say that you don't say these things out loud as, as a real person. Um, so you kind of, you use the little girl as your, <laughs> as your messenger. Do you really not express yourself this way? I mean, I know you have kids and stuff, so you probably have to be careful. Um, I don't blurt things out like she, I mean, I <laughs> probably did when I was, uh, maybe in college or I don't know, like I must've blurted stuff out like when I was angry, but I realized that that really hurt people's feelings. Yeah. So I, um, I'm much better at writing a feeling down and then, and then working it out to make a point in okay. a comic. Okay. So it's really like, I guess my work has been my art therapy. It's yeah. really helped me process yeah. so much of what, um, what I, I can't say in public. So yeah, I think that I, I think when I am in person talking to people, I talk more about patterns and themes and like observations. So I'm a little mm -hmm. bit more like removed from it. Okay. So with age, I've been able to come to that. Whereas like when I was just starting and angry, I was just like, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Frustrated, <laughs> angry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I can't like, I can't talk to my parents about it. I can't talk to other Asian people about it because, you know, it's like, we're just trying to survive as well, like other Asian Americans. So you don't really know what's on the spectrum, like where they're at in terms of like being sort of like self-actualized. Mm, so yeah. some of them, like they look like young Asian Americans, but then the stuff that comes out of their mouth is like our parents speaking. So, so you can't always, like, you don't really know, like, if you can talk to another Asian American about these things, but there are more of us now. Yeah. And then there are, and, yeah. And then like, and then like people that are not Asian, they like, just don't get it. <laughs> like, no, no, because you know, it, it's the lack of exposure of course, you know, to these themes and, and history and, you know, all sorts of lack of representation in media, you know, I mean, we can go on and on. We know this, 
right? This is, I feel like a broken record because I talk about this all the time. But what gives me hope is that with my show that started like in early 2020, and then we pivoted to because of all the, the shit that was going down, um, I am hearing from people um, and younger people saying, oh my gosh, thank you for talking about this because I felt like I couldn't talk about it or nobody wanted to talk about it or nobody wanted to address it. So I think people, I think younger Asians are very aware, um, you know, of what's going on. It's just that maybe going back to the whole permission thing to a certain extent, they want permission to be able to speak like this and speak openly, or they also want to feel, uh, you know, some solidarity. They want to feel that there are more of us out there who are willing to put up the fight. Right. Yeah. Um, I, th- yeah, mm-hmm. no, go ahead. Oh, well, it's it's sort of like the, my observation with the Me Too movement. It's that it's been ha- this hap- sexual harassment has been happening. Yeah. For Forever. centuries. Right. Yeah. And then and then it just took it took the society being ready and it took women who were victims of it to be ready. Yeah. And then one stepped out and talked about it and then right. someone else stepped out and talked about it. And then, and, you know, it does it does help because women who speak out will be shunned. They mm-hmm. will be victim blamed. They right. will be gaslighted. They yep. will be dragged through the mud. Yep. So it's really scary. And, you know, when there's um, an abuser that has done that to them, the fear of the retaliation from that abuser is really real. Mm-hmm. So it took, it took courage, realization, courage yeah. from the woman and also just looking out at the society around her and realizing, okay, um, yeah. I think I can talk about it. Like, yeah. I think it, it's time. It just takes that little crack in the dam, um, mm-hmm. to then, you know, really kind of break down that kind of barrier. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's scary. It's scary to mm-hmm. step out. It's scary to speak up. Um, and I think same with the anti-Asian hate situation. It was scary. We were all scared. Right, I mean, we were scared to walk out of our damn homes. We were scared for our parents, uh, mm-hmm. but finally, I think that fear led to okay, enough is enough's enough. This is bullshit. We we can't we can't sit at home silent like this anymore. We will not do this anymore. Right. So, mm-hmm. and you know, that's what I love about your cartoon is that even though yes, it's in a very sweet form, you're still addressing some heavier serious issues that are very real, um, that mm-hmm. an audience, you know, the average person may never have been introduced to if it ha- had not come in this sweet, funny form. Yeah. Yeah. If it was, if I was, I don't know, more Gothic, it maybe it wouldn't work. I don't know, but yeah. it's, um, it's like South Park, I, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure you hear these comparisons, right? It's just like, the, the, the rawness of South Park, but the funny aspect, it, and, but then they're also addressing serious issues. It's, mm-hmm. it, that's why it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um, I do also want to have fun and I, <laughs> I, I sometimes will throw in random stuff. Like I did one about working out and donuts and stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it, there's, there's room for everything. I think, um, well, there has so to I, be. Yeah. And I I just try to sort of like mix it up. And it's also based on like, kind of like what I'm feeling or what comes up. Yeah. Well, so I buried the lead, of course, to this interview. um, But uh, we have to get to the point, the the fact that um, your series is going to now be turned into an actual television series and some holiday movies. Right. It was Mm -hmm. picked up by Game Changer Films. Mm -hmm. This was an announcement that came out, I think, just like a month ago. It was very recent. Mm -hmm. Did you see that coming? I mean, or is this like, wow, this is uh, I never thought that this would happen kind of moment. Well, going back to when I had the deal or the offer offer. from Warner Brothers and they asked me to take the Asian girl out, I did want to have a television show. I have worked towards it in, in for many years, it felt like it would never happen. Yeah. Um, and I have had, um, offers and deals, but they would 
not let me write it. There was one time I um, had a deal, but I, you know, I had the lawyer that I had. I mean, you you use the representation that you have, but he forgot to put in that I was, I'd be a writer. So I showed up to the meeting and I'm like, okay, well, I have these ideas and they're like, no, no, you're not writing it. And I was like, what (laughs) the heck? (laughs) And they got this gay Italian guy (laughs) and I was like, Shut oh up. No, 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 no. Shut up. I'm not kidding. So, you know, there's these there's these rules in Hollywood for how you put a show together, but it didn't really make sense to me. And uh, and also it took so long for me to find an agent. You know, it was like there's a lot of talk about inclusivity and diversity and people of color. But I found it very challenging to find an agent that was aligned to my point of view. Totally. So it wasn't until the pandemic that um, I was introduced because I, I had a friend that I was like, Kavechi. I was like, oh my God, I can't find an agent. <laughs> so hard. And um, she was like, I have a friend who just moved over from production. She's now an agent. Um, and I want to introduce you. So we we did the dance. Like I sent her material. She read it. And then finally during the pandemic, it wasn't really like a commitment. But I was like, I am about to die of COVID. I have to do four <laughs> things before I die. Angry Little Girls is one of them. Are we working together or what? Oh my God. Yes or no? I just just give it to me straight. I will like I won't have I won't have any hard feelings. I can take a no. Yeah. But I need to know because I'm gonna start looking. She's like, I would love to work with you. So I was like, great. Oh, and then nice. what happened was that she's friends with Effie Brown of Game Changer Films. Okay. And so Effie was so this is how I don't know, maybe it was like destiny or something. I don't know. But so Effie Brown was ASB president of my high school, our high school. It was like an all girls Catholic high school. And she was like the only black girl. And I was probably like one of five Asian girls. Oh my God. She, she was a senior and I was a freshman Uh and I came to the school and I was like, wait, everybody's white, but this girl is like running the school. Like And she was an other, right? Wow. So she made such an impression on me. I never spoke to her, right? Because she was a senior, I'm a freshman. Yeah. But I really thought she was just like the coolest cat. Like she was so just amazing. And she she really made me feel like I could do it too. Wow. If you can see it, you can be it, right? Yes. So it ended up being that my senior year, I was ASB president. Oh. And I really think it was because she had made me see that it was possible. She was like a role model. Yeah. Yeah. So when my agent told me that she wanted me to have a zoom with her, I was like, no way. <laughs> so, what are the chances of that? That's like a f- full circle moment. It That's was crazy. And also because she has really, um, paid her dues in the business as a producer. Um, we've had, you know, we've gotten in the trenches and we have our war stories and whatnot, but yeah. like when we got together and talked, we we're like, Oh my God, you're like a sister. Oh, wow. And, um, and I really believe that who like, so there's all this talk about diversity Asian, and people of color yeah. mm-hmm. and telling our stories, Yeah, but they're all corporate people paying lip service, right? I have in, to agree. Yep. Yeah. I do. I mean, because that's what's selling, right? Yeah. So like, and it's like, to like me, you know, it's like the flavor of the month. That's yeah. how they look at it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I um so when I I I just felt like whoever is telling the story behind, like who's making it is just as important as what is being seen. Amen. Yep. Yep. And so I knew I knew I was like I really want to work with her. So I feel like she's the right fit. person. She's also a woman. I've ne- I never had like I never had this kind of like situation yeah. with a woman. I was always pitching to guys. Yes. For, and a woman of color. I mean, that yeah. makes a huge freaking difference. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. That's why we have to be at the table, right? Mm-hmm. We have to have that representation at the table. The decision makers, right? You can't be a bunch of white guys 
Sorry. And actually, what happened was, is that it was, so my agent before that was a man Mm -hmm. and he was a nice man, but just like, (laughs) just didn't get my point of view, to be honest. Like it really just, like it was like, he knew that I, I was like, he knew there was something there, but like, we didn't like, we didn't, we were not in sync, but like when, um, when I started working with my current agent, um, I was sort of talking about something and I used the term benevolent sexist and she's like, Oh honey, they all are. And I was like, Oh my God, she knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. I was like, okay. You're yeah. my tribe. Let's well, here, go. I mean, here's the thing. It makes it so much easier when there's just that basic level of understanding, right? So you don't have to explain everything, right? I've yes. talked to actors, like Asian actors who've been on different sets, but then they say when they're on a set with mostly other Asian and Asian Americans, it's like, you don't have to do the explaining anymore of this and that. And, and that's that level too, especially, and with women too women's issues. You don't have to do that level of explaining and the explaining of the struggle and the challenges that we face. So, yeah, you know, I was actually on set for a television show. I played the mom of a Korean family and you know, you never know who to like, sort of like criticism is really sensitive, right? You can't yeah, criticize the people that are above you. Right. So th- w- there was a dining table and they had those thick plastic chopsticks. And I'm okay. like, oh, oh no, 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 that's not Korean. And I was like, I need to say something. Oh. But like, who? And so I didn't want to offend the director because I could tell that it was, you know, he just, he had high status. And so uh, oh. I, I went to the PA and I'm like, I, I just have to say something because I would want to know if it was my show, Yeah, but those are not the right chopsticks to be using for a Korean family. And I really wanted to just wherever it needs to go right. so that whoever makes decisions can like change it. And then, um, they were like, Oh, okay. And so <laughs> they have been, I passed on. They're like, Oh shoot. Do we tell the, so then it finally like 30 minutes later, the director comes down and is like, oh my God, they're the wrong chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so it worked. You, the message got there. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah, but you God. know, it's like, I was so grateful that he actually was. Sensitive. Willing to hear and admit and change. And yeah. be like, Here's you know. the thing. I mean, like, you know, wh- how long ago was this? Oh, uh, like three years ago. Okay. So three years. So at least it was a little, because it, that would never would have happened like 10 years ago. No, no way. Oh no, no way. <laughs> but but you know that it's great that you did that because it obviously you know um, triggered the change. But that that cautiousness and fear we you know with with this movement we all have to now be like fuck that I'm gonna correct this because it's not right, right? Yeah, but I it did help that I um, I said it very like hey I don't know where this should go, but right. you know, I'm Korean and I, we don't use those chopsticks yeah. and I don't know where it needs to go, but if you want to pipe that up to wherever, cause I would want to know if yeah. it was my show. So right. Right. I think I delivered in a way that sort of, uh, it was respectful. It was respectful. Yeah. 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 Well, see, so there's it, ways to deliver. It is. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. You're right. See, so you're a much nicer person than I am. So <laughs> <laughs> You're very polite. Mm, mm, I'm not sure about that. Um, you know that I'm a fire horse. I'm a white oh. horse. Hi, Anmal. Uh, so I'm I'm totally like, you know, got to run and like I'm really fiery. So that's what that's are you? Pretty cool. I'm a I'm a wood tiger, but also a Leo. So I'm uh, a double cat. Okay. Okay. So, I don't like water. Um, I, don't, like I don't have any water in any of my five elements. I did a sajupai. You know, this Haju oh. reading, it's a Korean style reading of like your chart, whatever. And I did it many years ago. And the guy told me, he comes back, he's like, okay, I've really never seen a chart like this. Usually people, all their five pillars are made up of different elements. You know, this combination. He's like, all five of your pillars are fire. 
<laughs> I'm like, whoops. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. Um, anyway, well, going back to this um, project, uh, I, and we'll end here because I could talk to you for a very long time. Uh, wh what's what's the time frame, and like when are we going to see this come out? And what's what? Wh where are you in the process right now with the series? Well, we're very early in the process, so we are making a list of who we'll pitch to. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm pretty excited. I think that the reception will be really huge. good. <laughs> oh, I know. I think it's going to be huge. Yeah, and I I feel like the timing of it is so it's, it's finally time. It's finally time. And I think that angry little Asian girl as a animated series centered on the family can yes. finally work. And you can get away with a lot more doing animation too, right? Mm -hmm. You can have a lot more fun mm -hmm. with it. Um, so, oh, I have no doubt this is going to be a huge hit. I really don't. And the timing is great. The theme is great. The animation, I hope it doesn't change because it's perfect. Oh, Okay, this is what happens when you work from home, right? Now my dog is barking <laughs> at the next door neighbor's gardener. Um, so anyway, but I, I'm, I wish you well and good luck with it, but I don't think you're going to need it because I think it's going to be huge. Um, Thank you. I would love to be a voice at some point on the series, so I'm available anytime. <laughs> Oh, yes. Mm. We definitely will have some journalists on there. Exactly. Maybe I could do an mm -hmm. interview of some sort with a little angry Asian girl. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. but anyway, Leela, it was such it was so much fun talking to you. And I love this story of yours. It really is one of those unusual, you know, sort of out of the box stories that we all need to hear um, that, you know, kind of sometimes things happen by accident. But really, you wanted to express what you felt in your head and heart, and then look, mm -hmm. look what's happened to that. So huge congratulations to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we will definitely keep in touch moving forward. Yes, I would love to be on again, talk about some other I think that, stuff. I think there's so much to talk about. So anytime, seriously, anytime, come back, because I think uh, we, we could definitely chat for hours and hours on end. And uh, I think you're going to be my new friend now, too. So there. Well, I'm your friend, Maylee. Okay. <laughs> Count me in. All right, Leela. We'll talk to you soon. All right, cool. Okay. Thank you for having me. Okay, Leela and I are definitely going to be friends. Um, so anyway, so look out for Angry Little Asian Girl and Angry Little Girls, um, the combination. And, uh, you know, she's not sure exactly when all of this is going to be coming out because obviously they have to shop it around, she said. But without a doubt, it's going to be picked up immediately once they go into production. So I can't wait for it. But if you want to get a sense of this uh, ca uh, cartoon that, and the series that she's, she already put online herself by bootstrapping, you can totally look it up on YouTube and you can watch the episode. Some of my favorite episodes actually... Um, she has Margaret Cho as a guest on it to do voices, voiceovers for some of the characters, and it is hilarious. Uh, in fact, um, you know, some of some of the episodes, uh, I'm just like, yeah. I, I, look at this. I'm so distracted by the rain and thunder, I can't speak. You guys are thinking I'm just such a freak or such a geek about this. Okay. Uh, anyway, so... Look out for uh, Angry Little Girls, Angry Little Asian Girls. Definitely check out her website um, and uh, because she has all her merchandise on there. I'm trying to see. Hang on. Let me get the right website. Angry Little. Yeah, it's called angrylittlegirls.com. That's where she has all of her merchandise, including those T-shirts she talked about. Um, so, yeah. So, Check it out, and I wish her well, and uh, I thank you, Leela, for coming on the show once again. Um, and I'm going to leave you with this one clip from a recent episode that just cracked me up because it sort of sums up the character of Kim. All right. See you, everyone. Your history books are teaching us a bunch of fairy tales. Columbus took this land away from the native people and forced them to bow to his will. That is wrong. Kids deserve to know the truth. Uh, yeah, what they said. Yes, I'm sensing some anger in you girls, hmm? Fuck you!